So, so what is, so I, I, well, let's, let's, let me ask this first, and then we can get into the philosophy. I mean, it's easy, it would be easy to dismiss BAP because he's a nut and, and the, the whole ideology is, is insane and ridiculous and anti-American and marginal and, and really uh, and pretty dumb. But what you've discovered, which I think is fascinating and which is surprising to some extent, I think, is that many of his followers, many of the people interested in him, are smart, um, you know, PhD graduates in political science at some of the best universities in the country. Uh, so, so he is appealing to people, we kind of, to kind of geeks and to, to people who might become teachers and might become professors and might become real influencers. Um, that to me is what is really spooky and scary about what's going on here. It's not his ideas, which I think are easily dismissed. Uh, and it's not him who I think is a nobody and a nothing, given that he won't even come out and give it, give us his name. Um, but it's the fact that his followers are, in a sense, real people. They're not just uh, crazy young people sitting in their mother's basement, uh, you know, playing video games. Well, there is some of that. Sure. <laughs> uh, but um, but no, you're right. Uh, and one of the essays uh, that I published recently titled, um, what's it title? I've got it right here. Uh, the BAP Boys and America. Yep. And it's, it's an attempt to understand and explain how and why a generation primarily of highly educated young men, uh, it, not only in the United States, but around the world actually, because this is becoming a worldwide movement, yep. uh, how and why they have become attracted uh, to, to these extraordinarily bad ideas. And I think, it's, I think it's really important for all of us to understand that the tectonic plates underneath our culture are shifting, right? And, and this is really why I got interested in this because you know, the future is always with the young and to understand where the country is going, you have to understand wh what it is that is appealing to, to young people. And, and in my particular case, uh, I was interested in what young conservatives and libertarians were becoming interested in. And so it's important to begin with a kind of sociological profile of who these young, primarily men, but not all men, you know, what, what has brought them to this, right? Because many, this is interesting because many of, the, of, of these young men, uh, five, six years ago, would have thought of themselves as mainstream Heritage Foundation uh, conservatives or Cato Institute libertarians. Yep. Um, but within a very short period of time, they migrated uh, and indeed have come to reject what they call conservatism, Inc. and libertarianism, Inc. for this, for this new philosophy. Now, why, why is it? I mean, who are these, these young men? Look, this is a generation of primarily young men who from the time they entered kindergarten until the time they graduate from high school and then college have been told that they are racist, sexist, and homophobic by virtue of being white, male, and heterosexual, right? And so this is a generation of, 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 of young men and women who in effect have really felt the slings and arrows uh, of the totalitarian left, right? In ways that you and I would not have when we were you know, going through uh, elementary school and high school and, and college, even though we had some of it back in the day, but not like them. I mean, th they are living in a stifling uh, moral, psychological, intellectual environment and have grown up in this environment. And, and then all of a sudden one day, you know, when, when, when they're maybe say in their twenties and they, they come to realize that Brooks Brothers conservatism and white paper libertarianism have, have been feckless in defending them, uh, they, they, they have rejected, uh, they come to reject um, uh, mainstream conservatism and libertarianism. And, and then all of a sudden they started looking for these alternatives. Some of them initially went with the so-called alt-right, but in more recent uh, years, they have migrated toward the Catholic trad cons and towards Bronze Age mindset. So, you know, on the one hand, you can say, and I do say in, 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 in what I've been writing, is that I get it. I understand how and why 
uh, this generation has become what I've called the lost generation. Um, they had no defenders. They had no intellectual defenders. Yep. And there was a vacuum that had been created by conservatism and libertarianism, Inc. Right? No, but nobody's interested in, in the Cato Institute producing another white paper on free market transportation policy. Right? That's not what interests the young today. Yeah, there's, um, no, there's no inspiration. There's no, uh, and there's no fight. There's no fight against the evil of the left. There's no, and there's no projection of, of what is possible. And, you know, I noticed, you know, five years ago, again, when, uh, when all, the alt-right was active, uh, there were a few, not many, but a few objectivists who kind of drifted off to the alt-right. And when you asked them why, their answer was, they're at least doing something. Right. And the idea was that by by spamming or what do you call it, trolling, by doing memes, that was doing something because th these young people felt like they were fighting. Right. There was a fight in them. And nobody has rallied these young people around the cause in a way. You know, we always say it's intellectual. It takes decades. We have to write papers. You have to write articles. You have to do this stuff. They want action. They want to do something right now. And, yeah. and those people, those young men, and I think this is why it's primarily men, although I'll be accused of being sexist in a minute, um, are oriented towards action. And given that orientation towards action, it, action in the physical world. And it's not just the libertarians and the conservatives. I mean, there's very little I can tell a young person today. I said, these are the things you should do, act, in order to change the world. Because... It's a big task. Yeah, it, it, it is a big task, right? Uh, but they've been seduced by, yep. the, by, by these very bad uh, uh, philosophies. And you're absolutely right. I, I mean, I have dubbed them the fight club right, right? It's, it's this generation of, 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 uh, of young men who, who, who do want to stand up and fight. And, that, and one can be very sympathetic to that. I mean... That's how I've that's how I've conducted my professional life for the last thirty years. Uh, it has been to be in yep. the middle of a fight. I'm just, just remember that the Nazis said the same thing, right? I mean, they they came out and said, "We we need to act. We need to do something about the state of the world, the left, and everything else. We need to act on it." So it, it, it's all about it, it's 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 the same materialistic fascist kind of orientation towards action without thought yeah. and we are both be fighting but the fight takes on a different i mean it's not a fight that everybody can be engaged in in the same way because of the nature of the fight yeah and it, look i will say i mean you you can think of for instance bap and his followers in terms of the good the bad and the ugly Right, so there are some things that that I can understand how and why it is that young men today would be attracted to it. So BAP is openly and explicitly uh, anti-egalitarian. Yep. Right, and, uh, and 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 not only is he anti-egalitarian and and has been a, really a quite savage critic uh, of the left. Um, and it, uh, it, it's, it's primary hobby horses. Um, he's also offering something of a positive vision, which is aesthetics. So in many ways, the first thing that, you, that one has to say about BAP is that it's an aesthetic movement. He's trying to lead a kind of a, an aesthetic revolution, which yeah. is why, in, you know, yeah. it, this can be mocked uh, to be sure, but this is why BAP on his Twitter feed like every day is posting uh, photographs of, of sort of half naked, muscle bound, uh, usually European uh, male models. This is the same aesthetic, exactly the same aesthetic as the Nazis and the communists. I mean, uh, it's exactly the same. If you look at if you look at communist art from the Stalin era, it's all these buff men, you know, doing physical labor because, you know, you know, that's what's really and, and if you look at the Nazi aesthetic, both in architecture, in sculpture, uh, and in, in everything else that they did, it, it's the same kind of, it's, it's, he, he's not original here. I mean, Nazism was very much projected as an aesthetic movement. Um, and, and Hitler spent huge, given that he was at war, spent huge amounts of time 
designing the future Berlin and talking about with sculptors and architects about what it would look like. I mean, this is a this is a big part of what these materialistic kind of fascists are all about. Yeah. And that also translates uh, into his political views. So uh, in a recent podcast, uh, BAP uh, praised uh, the aesthetics of Albert Speer. Yeah. Right. Uh, the, the Nazi, the Nazi architect, uh, and the, the mass, you know, nighttime rallies, mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, you know, the, and the, the theatrics of, of, you know, political Lina, work. Lina Wert, Wertheimer, what was the director's name who, who directed yeah. all those Nazi movies? I mean, I'm sure that is massively appealing to somebody like that. Right. Yeah. Uh, so it's, 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 it's anti-egalitarian. It's, it's anti-nihilist. BAP has been uh, profoundly influenced and you can see it in his book, Bronze Age Mindset by, by Nietzsche uh, and Nietzsche's critique of nihilism. So um, some of your, some of the people in your audience might know of Nietzsche's discussion of the last man uh, at the, in the prologue to Thus Spake Zarathustra. And the, the last man is, uh, is sort of the, the last man, uh, is in a sense, it's socialist man. Um, and who, who BAP refers to as a bug man, right? It's the lowest form of life, uh, which can be equated to essentially cattle. Right, life in in modern and by liberal I mean old liberal life in modern liberal bourgeois society, right? According to Nietzsche and to Bap, is equivalent to herd life. It's like it's like cows whose only life is to be in pasture, eating, uh, defecating, and procreating. Right, that's all. That's all life is in modern bourgeois society, and. Nietzsche and BAP, they want to, they reject, they reject the, this, this, the, the, the last man uh, or bug life or yeast life as uh, BAP refers to it. And they, they want a new kind of politics, a politics of greatness where great individuals, right? And so there's, there is also an appreciation of hierarchy and inequality uh, in BAP's writing, writings, but it's without limit, without bounds. Uh, it, and not it was, based on, not based on, not based on the kind of hierarchy we, I mean, not based on the mind. It's based much more on, on force and, and politics and, and power. Uh, oh, absolutely it is. I mean, that sense he, he shares that with Marx, right? It's about in the end power. Exactly. Consider the name, Bronze Age Pervert, or the book, Bronze Age Mindset. So what's Bronze Age? What's typical of the Bronze Age? So he, Bap wants to return to a pre-Socratic age. Uh, he, wants to he wants to return to literally to the Bronze Age. He has said explicitly, uh, and I'm quoting, death to logocentrism, death to reason, death to philosophy, which like Nietzsche, uh, he equates with logocentrism, that is, and philosophy with Socrates uh, and, and, and the Greek philosophers. Uh, he wants to return to a pre-Socratic Homeric age uh, where, where individuals, uh, I mean, he has a, a, different a different view of human nature. He wants to, he wants to um, do away with reason and he wants to uh, elevate intuition, mm -hmm. instincts, mm -hmm. will, um, uh, what the Greeks called thumos, uh, which is a kind of uh, which is a kind of spiritedness. He talks about innate, innate blood and desire. So it's it's it, he, he, in other words, he wants a return to the Dionysian in rejection of the Apollonian. Yes, and, right. and, and just to remind everybody, Ayn Rand has a famous essay, Apollo versus Dionysus. So, you, 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 you know, which you contrast the two, and I think it's obvious, comes down strongly on the side of Apollo. Uh, right, and he comes down strongly on the side of Dionysius. Mm -hmm. He wants to liberate man, what he thinks are man's natural instincts 
uh, intuitions. Uh, he talks about the unquenchable lust for power. Um, and so therefore his view of human nature also, so in other words, that is to say he views man's instinct, his instincts, his hormones, his blood, his desire, his will as that which is most defining and fundamental about human nature, not the fact that man is the rational being. Right. Yeah. So you said earlier that he rejects nihilism, but don't you think he is a nihilist? Well, th that's I, no, that's I think that's right. I mean, he 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 re he rejects the nihilism of the left. But there's a sense in which he himself is a nihilist. Uh, he's a nihilist in I mean, because fundamentally in the rejection of what he calls logocentrism and reason and philosophy. I mean, there's a sentiment you could say that's the ultimate form of nihilism. And by the way, that's a nihilism that he shares in common with the postmodern left, right? Because they reject the same things, mm -hmm. right? And, and so he is in, in, in many ways, despite his rejection um, of, of uh, his rejection of, of egalitarianism and nihilism, he does nonetheless share a great deal in common with those to, that, he, that he's opposed to, yeah? Yep. Right? And so th his, this view of human nature that he has translates uh, into uh, moral action and into political action. So um, morally speaking, he's a kind of, to, to use a character from uh, Plato's Republic, he's what I call Thrasymachian, or he advocates a view of justice that one can describe as Thrasymachian, by which I mean Thrasymachus was a character primarily in book one of the Republic uh, who, who really makes famous the doctrine might makes right, right? So in other words, there, there is no right which is to say there, there is no objective view of justice or of, um, of human action. There is only will to power, right? A concept which he takes directly uh, from Nietzsche. So might makes right. And so those, those who are strongest, both in terms of willpower uh, and of, of physical strength, uh, of courage, uh, they should be allowed to roam the earth, literally, to literally roam the earth and conquer. Mm -hmm. That's the Bronze Age. That so is the Bronze Age. What's, what's similar, if you will, about these different strands within, the, within the, this new right? Um, what's similar between the trad cons? Because the trad cons tolerate that. I mean, and, and commentary, not commentary, uh, Claremont review books have clearly kind of embraced at least some of uh, the BAP, BAP, BAPists, right, in, in, uh, in uh, their, their online publication, at least. Um, what is similar about them? What's the attraction of BAP to people in the Catholic conservative tradition? I would say it's two things. First, it's, it is, as I've already suggested, the rejection of conservatism and libertarianism, Inc. Mm -hmm. uh, that's number one. And number two, which I've already suggested as well, is their anti-Americanism, by which I'm, you know, I, I'm using the term Americanism uh, as a kind of, uh, uh, as a way to sum up uh, what I consider to be the moral political philosophy of the American founding. Well, and the third would be a rejection of the left and the, and the view of the left as yeah, sure. the enemy and, and, and the be all end all of the, the only thing to be focused on. Um, and I think to some extent that the trad cons realize that they have been part of the, what did you call them? The, the, the kind of traditional conservatism and, and the, that they have failed and that maybe BAP brings new blood or new energy or new excitement to the cause. Yeah, and, and, and I think this is something that we should all be thinking about. Right, so I'm a proponent of a free society. Mm -hmm. That's what I. That's uh, that's what that's what I'm working for. Yep. Is is a is a free society, and I I I recognize 
uh, that that the totalitarian or postmodern left is uh, is is in many ways I think it is the primary threat to 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 a free society, um, and and I also recognize the fecklessness of of Brooks Brothers conservatism and white paper libertarianism. Absolutely. Right. And so I, I, I was the fecklessness, they, they're not a, just a fecklessness, they, not just that they're ineffective, but they actually do damage. They, much of their ideas, as we discussed in neoconservatism, lead to BAP, lead to uh, I- inevitably because the, the, the bad ideas and their ideas based on also fundamentally a rejection of reason and individualism. So they, they're going to lead to these others. And that's that's true, both, I think, of the conservatives and the libertarians. Uh, absolutely. Conservatives in particular, right, sh- share, share the, the same moral premise as the left, which is more, which is altruism, right? And I mean, this, this altruism uh, uh, and its psychological cognate, uh, which is guilt, uh, I mean, th- these have been the, I think, the primary factors in, in, uh, that are at the heart of this what I call fecklessness uh, of traditional conservatism and, 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 and even libertarianism. Um, and so, you know, what we need to, what, I mean, what I, I, I think it is, Yaron, and you and I have talked about this privately before, as I've said, just in today's, today's show, I do think the tectonic plates, the cultural tectonic plates under, underneath this country are shifting in, in massive ways. And it's important for the proponents of a free society and objectivists in particular to understand how those, those, those cultural tectonic plates are shifting. And we have to find a way to be able to speak to this generation, this young generation that uh, on the one hand uh, has a sense of hopelessness uh, uh, on the one hand and, and on the other hand, a, a sense that, that, that what they need to do is just fight. And, and that's all there is, is just fighting, fighting the left. But that's, in, that's, that's radically insufficient, right? You have, to have a, you have to have a positive vision. That's different than the left. <laughs> that's different from the left. Right, because their positive vision is the same as the left's. It's the same nihilism. I mean, the the great tragedy I think today in America is, and somebody asked about this: is can, can we even define left and right? Aren't they all the same? Well, in a sense, they're all the same. So somebody says, "Can you or, or Thompson define right wing versus left wing ideology?" It seems like the closer one examines the differences, the more faint the line between them becomes. Authoritarian is authoritarian, no, and I'd say yes, authoritarian is authoritarian. The, it's useful to, to differentiate between authoritarian of the left, authoritarian of the right for a variety of intellectual reasons to be able to combat them. But essentially, they're the same thing. There's a nihilism of the left and nihilism of the right. There's the common good of the left and the common good of the right. The public interest of the left, public interest of the right. But it, it's somebody, you know, it's, it's, I've always said the spectrum is individualism, collectivism. And then at some point, the collectivism branches into two. Right. Yeah. One goes right and one goes left, but they're both collectivists and they they kind of get really close to each other at, 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 at the extreme. Um, so. Do you think this has traction? That is, if we project out and, and, and you know, doing these things is always risky. But if we think 10, 15 years out, 20 years out, is BAP bigger? Is is, is that the danger? Is are the trad cons more influential? What, what is the trajectory if nothing, if nothing is done to combat these guys? Uh, that's that's a that's a good and and a hard question. You know, on the one hand, I'd like to think that BAP and BAPism uh, is a passing fad. That it's that uh, you know eventually these these young men will grow up. Um, maybe they'll get married, have kids, coach little league baseball. You know, and 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 have and 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 see the silliness uh, of all of this. Um, but you know, on on the other hand, um, it, it's it, it is growing. 
It is, it is absolutely growing. And it, it also turns out that the, the Catholic Tradcon movement is growing. So, I mean, I, I, let's just say I've heard that at one well-known Ivy League university, uh, in fact, the most likely of all Ivy League universities uh, has, has, a, has a substantial faction of young graduate students who are, uh, the, who, who are Catholic integralists that is, who, who, who believe uh, in uh, throne and altar, uh, who, who believe, uh, you know, who, that is. Who, whose first allegiance is to the Pope, oh, and, wow. and they, they would like to see an American monarchy. Wow. So, so I, I, I mean, I agree with that. I think that what this is scary is not in the, in the sense that any one of these will be exactly what the future leads to, but that so many people are rejecting liberty on the right now. We know that this has happened already on the left. They're rejecting freedom, liberty, the found, and really scary, the founding fathers, right? They always used to claim allegiance to the founding fathers. That it's hard to tell what their manifestation will be in 10 years, 20 years. But we know, I think, that this is going to grow. Uh, and, and who knows how the, the different, the, these movements might unite under a banner of common good uh, under a banner of, of authoritarianism, under a banner of more materialistic action orientation. Uh, who knows what it'll, what manifestation it will take, but just like the alt-right in a sense evolved into this, um, this, who knows where this is going to go, but it's not going in any good direction. Well, I'll tell you where it's going. It's going toward Weimar. It's going yeah. toward Weimar, Germany, the 1920s where uh, the left and the right want to exclude um, uh, the proponents of a free society, right? So that, that, that I mean, this is, this is the reason why they are attacking me so vociferously, right? Because I actually represent a genuine alternative to what they're proposing um, relative to the left, right? as we've been talking about, they have more in common with the left than they apparently have in common with me. And so I'm, I, I've become certainly with, well, actually, to be honest, with both the Catholic trad cons and with the, the BAP boys, I've become public enemy number one, right? So since- That's a compliment. Yeah, since the Pajama Boy Nietzsche's essay was published, um, well over 20 essays, I think maybe now 25 essays have been published in response to that essay. Uh, and um, so I, I'm, I'm sort of fighting a two front war uh, right now uh, against both the Catholic trad cons and, and the bat boys. Um, and so, but the, the, this is the issue you're on. Um, this won't be a passing fad if we don't fight it. Yeah, I agree. Right. That's well, that. It, it might be a passing fad in the sense of the particulars of BAP, but it won't be a passing fad in terms of the ideas behind it. That's right. No, that's and, exactly and I think right. that's absolutely right. I think we are in, you, know, you can see the, the nihilism on the left explicitly, which was the same in Weimar Germany. And shockingly, you know, people always, it, it was the right or a kind of a unification of the nihilism of left and right, which led into, which was what the Nazis were. Uh, you know, they united both the right and the left. Right. Yeah. And I mean, one of the things that they've been saying about me is that they've been criticizing me for is quote, uh, punching right, right? The, the yeah, first- well, I get that. It's on the chat, all over the chat. Why are we even talking about this? Isn't the real threat the left? Why are we punching right? We should be all focused on punching left. Later, we can deal with them, you know, and, and why is that wrong? Well, look, the first thing to say, anybody who knows me, yeah. Right. And, and, and maybe, maybe your audience doesn't know who no, I this am. Isn't about you. This is about me primarily because they, you know, and it doesn't matter you see to them. And this is I'm sure to BAP and to the uh, trad cons. It doesn't matter how much you've punched left. That's irrelevant. It's the fact that you're daring to punch right. That offends them. It's, this is just a rationalization. The fact that, that we're not spending every living moment of our life fighting the left is a complete rationalization. They don't want you punching right because they don't want you punching right. It has yeah. nothing to do with. Yeah, but, the, the, but those, those, those are just labels, right? Which yeah. is why I reject- Punching authoritarianism. Exactly. To repeat, I'm a proponent of a free society yep. and I will fight all enemies against the free society. And that is 
uh, the totalitarian left and the fascist right, because the fascist right shares nothing in common yep. in terms of the positive moral and political vision uh, that they espouse with what I espouse. There, 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 is, there, there are no similarities. I have nothing in common with them. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, I mean, this is something that I, I just I walked I, in a sense, you know, I walked into by accident. Uh, I had no idea when I first published the Pajama Boy Nietzschean's essay that I would spend almost a year uh, fighting these guys. And let me let me also tell you that not a single one of them has responded intellectually. Yeah, I've, I've seen articles. articles. I've seen articles. They're pathetic. They yeah. response. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the, the, they're all ad hominem. I mean, everything that has been published in response to me, either in terms of these essays or on Twitter has all been ad hominem. Uh, and, and, and sometimes more than ad hominem. Yeah, say something about the more than ad hominem. I think it's important for people to know who these bastards really are. Okay. So let me just before I do that, take a moment to promote my Substack because that's where this has all been happening recently. So, yeah, and by the way, you can find uh, that Substack in the description below. I've linked to the Substack and to the five or six articles about uh, BAP and the, and the dissident right. Yeah, so my Substack is titled The Redneck Intellectual. Uh, it's at cbradleythompson, one word, dot substack dot com. And uh, in the last few months, I've published a series of essays, um, first in response to my Catholic Tradcon critics, and then in response to Bronze Age pervert uh, and, and his followers. Um, and let me focus in particular on, on a couple of essays that I published in late December, early January. The first of which was titled Bronze Age Pervert and the Fascist New Frontier. And the second, the second one was titled uh, German Nihilism American Style. And then finally, there was a third Bronze Age Pervert uh, and, or BAP and the BAP Boys, uh, something like that. Anyway, um, they initiated on Twitter uh, a coordinated campaign. Uh, and this is demonstrable uh, when I say coordinated. It was a coordinated, it was a campaign actually co coordinated by BAP himself. Uh, to have uh, his minions attack me on, on Twitter. And of course, it's all the standard, uh, th this is their term, not mine. It's all the standard shit posting, uh, demanding that I quote, post physique, uh, describing me as cognitively female um, and you know e every other possible insult. None of which bothers me, of course, I mean, uh, particularly during this lockdown, uh, all of this shit posting on Twitter against me has provided an enormous um, uh, form of amusement uh, and, and, uh, and laughter for me. But it took a nasty turn uh, after BAP and the Fascist New Frontier essay came out when they started libeling me uh, online. Uh, and then after they were libeling me and I, I, this again is demonstrably demonstrably provable that that they were li uh, libeling me and defaming my character. Then they started threatening me physically, and then after they threatened me physically, then they started threatening my wife and children, uh, and threatening to put together a dossier against me, which they were going to deliver to the dean of my college. Right. Um, so this is, this is who, th these are the people that I'm dealing with. Um, and they, they, uh, they, they continue the libel and, um, and they, and they also continue to say nothing substantive, uh, in, in response to my arguments.